Welcome to Teaching Orchestra. In this episode, I'm going over how I teach Spring Song by M.L. Daniels. Look, I know we want to get to the left-hand stuff, and your students want to get to the left-hand stuff too. There are some augmented, extended, or three, four patterns that we really want to teach, and that, that stuff's really cool and exciting and conceptually great. But for your students to understand something like a three, four pattern or an augmented pattern, they need to understand the whole concept behind it and the techniques associated with it. And that's why I like to name my finger patterns instead of use the numbers because it's more than just a fingering, it's a technique. And without the technique, you're not gonna get out of the first measure, because let's look at it. We've got an F sharp on the C string and the violas. And if you're using third violins, it's not gonna be any help here because your violins probably don't have C strings. Maybe you could put some cellos on that part, but you've also got a lot of G string stuff here in the second violin. And most likely because of the range where the inner strings tend to play, it's unusual in the concert repertoire at this level. And most technique books are not addressing this stuff, so it's gonna be foreign to them. So we're gonna have to give them some extra technique to get them through it. There might be like a page of C string stuff in the second book of your method book series, but be honest, how often do your students play on lower strings at this level? And let's not pretend that you just use the same bow technique on the lower strings as you do on the upper strings, right? How many of your cellists and violists even know the C string notes at sight? Sure, the most likely to be president kid knows them, but what about the kid who's actually the most likely to be president? Because you know that the kid who's voted most likely to be president is way too smart to go into politics. Just kidding, just kidding. We love politicians here at Teaching Orchestra. Thank you for supporting music education. The other foundational technique that we need to support here is the E string. It happens twice here, once in measure 10, and the other one here at measure 51. But when your first violins play on the E string, especially when it's occasionally, it shouldn't sound like microphone feedback on the old PA system in your school's cafeteria, should it? The fastest way to improve technique is to isolate it. And I would just start with quarter notes in the lower middle of the bow on everyone's lowest string the C string for violas and cellos, the G string for violins, and the E string for basses. So you've got E, C, G. Hey, it's a first inversion C major chord. It should sound nice if the strings are in tune, and if we're getting enough weight on the string to activate the string, it's gonna sound good. Given that the strings are roughly the same length, thickness is added to the lower strings to have them vibrate at lower frequencies at a tension set where the string doesn't rub against the fingerboard. So we have to overcome the inertia every time we change bow direction because an object at rest will remain at rest unless an outside force acts upon it. That's Newton's first law, and it's a law, not a suggestion. So a thicker string has more mass, and it's going to need greater force to act upon it. So if you have students use enough weight at the beginning of the notes, and they release that weight as the bow is drawn so it won't sound as scratchy, their tone is gonna sound good. In the beginning, the students won't release the weight, and it's gonna sound scratchy, and that's fine, because it's better to start with that than to just have them slide their bows around, because without weight on the string, spring song is gonna be a complete disaster. And students starting off playing an orchestra tend to not use enough weight in general, right? All right, so we start small and then we expand. Once they get good at the quarter notes, then we have them play half notes, and then they get, get good at playing half notes, then you can have them do whole notes, and you can even go beyond whole notes if you want to, but in spring song, there isn't a rhythm that exceeds the whole note value, so it's up to you where you wanna stop, but probably should go all the way to whole notes. Now on the higher strings, and particularly the E string, you don't need a, as much weight. This problem is going to be compounded, so you want them to lighten the bows. The bowing angles, however, are going to be important. Make sure the bows are straight. One of the issues that violinists and violists tend to have is bowing around their right leg. Some of the times the way they sit in their chair, 
their leg is in the way and they end up bowing around the leg and that's a problem. So you can either have them drop the leg down, you can have them turn their torso, or you can just have them bow on the inside of the leg instead of the outside of the leg and all that stuff's fine as long as the bow is straight. We just need enough weight though to keep the bow in place. We don't need a lot of it on the E string for the violins especially. So just a little bit of weight and use good technique to keep the bow straight instead of weight to keep the bow straight like we do on the lower strings. Finally, I can't talk about tone without bringing up vibrato. If you're thinking that you don't have time to teach vibrato, you don't have time not to teach it. If your students aren't comfortable with vibrato, they're really going to struggle because vibrato relaxes the left hand. And if the left hand is tense, they're going to have trouble overcoming the fourth finger A's and they have plenty of those to play and they're not gonna have pressure or the weight balance in their hands to play augmented, extended, or three, four fingerings, however you call it in your classroom. And you can't manage this without vibrato. I mean, it's possible to do it. I've seen some groups do it, but it's gonna take you longer and they're gonna be missing a skill that they need to play later on. So it's just gonna allow them to keep their bad technique longer unless you teach them vibrato now. And the longer they have bad technique, the harder it is gonna be to fix it. And the longer you wait to teach vibrato, the harder it's gonna be to teach vibrato. So just try at a bare minimum. See if your students can just handle this. Lift the fingers up, then set them on the string. Then lift them up and set them on the string. You think your students can handle that? Okay, step two. Let's have them set a finger on the string, let's say second finger, and just have them press into the string, release. Press into the string, release. Can they handle that? Sure. All right, same finger. Let's just add a roll to it. Roll the finger, roll it back. Roll the finger, roll it back. All right, let's combine the two. Roll the finger back. Now press as you roll towards the bridge. Roll the finger back. Now press towards the bridge. Okay, finger flexors, right? Set your fingers in place, flex, flex, flex. All this seems pretty easy, right? And then now all we have to do is just combine everything, okay? We just move the wrist and we keep the fingers in place and that's how you do vibrato. No big deal, right? Just stage it that way. And if you want a better idea of how to do it and you want more detail, go to season one, episode four. And if that stuff doesn't work for you, there's plenty of other ideas out there. So whatever works, please, please get your students comfortable with vibrato to make teaching spring song and lots of other concert repertoire a lot easier and more enjoyable for your students. In my next video, I'm gonna be going over bow distribution and I hope to see you then. 